Yes. Hey, you, hey, you, hey. You. All right, we cleared the room with that one. Uh, what do we want to do here? I think we just get through this, man. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Let me introduce your next performer. I just met him a minute ago. His name is Jeff Thompson. All right. <laughs> Give it up. What's up, PhD VIP Lounge? Yeah. How are you? the three of you? <laughs> are, you, are we lit? That's what the doobies need to be lit. I'm really super bummed that the table that was just sitting right over there, uh, the AARP contingent, uh, I'm super bummed that they left because they're the only one that are going to get my 86 pot drought references uh, and probably the only ones that know what Paraquat is. Those are all of my weed references are like from the 70s and 80s and Cheech and Chong records. Um, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm 20. Oh, yeah, this guy gets it. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, any Dave Matthews fans in the crowd? I'm just always impressed to see that people will still admit to that. Awesome. I love it. Um, so I, uh, I really wanted to uh, present my best performance at this gig because it's the longest I've ever driven to not get paid to do comedy. Um, and so I uh, uh, went to two open mics in a row right before this uh, to kind of hone my craft as it were. And I think I peaked last night. So this is, you're catching me on the down, downward side of, a, of, of my comedy uh, career peak. But um, I went to the uh, Bricktown Comedy Club. It's a new comedy club that just opened in Tulsa, in South Tulsa. One of the four good things happening in South Tulsa. Um, and I was such a fucking idiot that I decided I would take a first date uh, to the comedy show. Uh, this is a young lady that I've been wooing. When I say young lady, I mean she's 37. Uh, but that makes her a young lady to me because I'm 57. So yeah, I guess it's what's that robbing the robbing the hospital bed. It's not quite the cradle. Um, she uh, she had a, a traumatic brain injury, and uh, I told her I got I got her permission to tell the story. Just to be clear, she told me at the end of the day that she wanted to just be friends. So she's dead to me. Uh, so you know, they say don't speak ill of the dead, but I'm about to. Um, she had this traumatic brain injury, and so I got up uh, and I said, hey, can I make a joke about your brain injury? She goes, okay, and she looked at me like I was evil. So I got up there and I said, hey, I brought a date tonight. Uh, she's got a traumatic brain injury, but uh, it's really the first time I've uh, been out with a woman who brings her own roofie. Oh, wow, dark, dark, yeah. See, there's nobody in the fucking room, so I don't care. Um, I, uh, I was also on stage uh, looking around the room. I don't know if you've been to the Bricktown Comedy Club, but they have all these pictures of dead comics all over the room. And I saw uh, a picture of a comic I didn't know was dead. And I, was, I, I found out on stage that fucking Betty White died like about a month ago. I didn't know she had died. She had seemed like this, like Keith Richards of, of you know, female comedians, man. I figured she was just gonna be around forever. And so I'm like, hey man, they need to move that picture of Betty White. They're gonna kill her, putting her up against all those dead comics. And uh, then I got the com the, I got that there was a theme and that all the comics in the room were dead, or all the comics on the wall were dead, and most of them in the room were dead also, <laughs> at least from the waist down. Um, so uh, yeah, great to be at a fucking cannabis festival. When, when I was invited to do comedy at Harvest Fest, I thought this was gonna be like a lot of Neil Young people that were just, just fresh off the plow, just having brought in that few sheaves of corn. I did not realize that it was gonna be a cannabis fest, and I didn't realize that it, until I did the math that we were gonna, if we started at five o'clock, which was when we were supposed to start, we would have been 40 minutes post 420. So I figured the crowd would just be ready. Um, and so I built in a three minute delay for all of my jokes so that I could give them all time to process and so that there'd be about a, they'd be, whenever I heard them laughing, I'd realize they were laughing at a joke from three minutes ago. Um, but now that's irrelevant because uh, there's like literally one guy in the room and as soon as he gets his plate, I think he's probably gonna hit the road, right? No, I'm staying. Oh, nice, my man, what's your name? Alex. Alex or Alan? Alex. Alex. Alex, we're glad to have you, man. Thanks for, thanks for coming to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, you're at a cannabis fest and people are trying to make you laugh. 
which is, I mean, you know, if it was me back in the old days, I would have been trying to pinch your sack. That's an old reference too. See, weed doesn't even come in sacks anymore, does it? I have yeah. no fun. Yeah, I, I haven't heard that in a while. Yeah, see, I, okay, so I'll just go ahead and I was going to say this later, but I'll say it now. I'm 22 years sober. I haven't smoked weed in that long. Um, and so, uh, but I used to smoke quite a bit. Uh, I used to, uh, I used to uh, have a dope dealer. You guys don't even have dope dealers anymore. There's dispensaries now. You guys just fucking pull up, park. You got to worry about getting like a hand, you know parking in a handicapped spot while you go inside to score. I had to wait till the motherfucker answered the phone. I had to leave messages on an answering machine. That's how long ago it was. And I would um, uh, have to, it's like I go inside and I don't know what it was, but back in the day, and maybe it's just me because I'm a people pleaser, I felt like I had to like pretend like I was over there for a different reason. Like, hey man, just want to come over and hang out, you know, see how you're doing. So then he'd make me like watch a full episode of The Iron Chef with him. Um, and he would always wear these like coaches shorts. It was just, the whole thing was a little weird. Um, but then I'd get my uh, sack of dope and I'd leave. Um, and uh, there was, uh, in, in 1986, uh, when I was um, really at, at the peak of some of my partying, there was a pot drought. Um, there was no pot available. And I firmly believe that that was a CIA plot to get everyone hooked on cocaine, because it sure as fuck worked on me. Um, you know, cocaine's very interesting. I always feel like when I snort the first line, I feel like when Popeye gets his spinach, you know, like da 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 da, I'm ready to fucking go do it, yes. And uh, you know, and in truth though, it's not like I really love cocaine. I just love the way it smells. Yeah. Um, so what's what's really interesting now as cannabis culture is like becoming a thing. Is, is it's just like foodies. Foodies have all these ridiculous words to describe like food and like adjectives. Like it, it has a, it's very uh, upfront oaky and it has a nice, you know, uh, maple finish. And so they, they call weed flour. You guys heard this? They call it flour. Oh, it's yeah. so weird to me. It seems like they're just trying to like, I mean, all of my vernacular is like weed, you know, weed, dope, whatever. Um, uh, we used to have to go to head shops to get our uh, smoking equipment, and they had to pretend that they were selling it for tobacco use. You, like, if you said weed, they wouldn't even they'd ask you to leave the store. Um, so, really, what I'm saying is that's my marijuana equivalent of walking uphill to the school in snow both ways. Uh, you kids don't know how good you have it today. Um, all right, I'm going to uh, bring up another comic because everyone should enjoy this torture as much as I am. Uh, so uh, I think uh, Mr. Cepeda Cheeks will be coming up stage to entertain us. <laughs> Cepeda was actually the host of my first ever open mic in Tulsa, so he's sort of like my comedy mentor or idol. That was so sweet of you to say. That was it's well. True. It's true. Thank you, man. I'm yeah. only phony when I'm drunk. It was crazy because I was definitely drunk when he was there. I was probably intoxicated hosting that. Oh, Mike, it was a good time. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. Jeff. I'll bring him up. All right. Get up for Jeff Thomas. Yeah! Yeah! Oh, okay. Oh, how are you? Dakota Six Killer, everybody, from Jay, Oklahoma. All right, we're going to wrap this thing up here in a little bit because I guess the burlesque. Oh, the burlesquers just came in and left. I had all of my misogynist material prepared for them, man. <laughs> Shit. All right. Um, well, I want to thank you guys for uh, being here in the fucking PhD VIP room. That's a lot of letters. None of them make a word. Pfft, dip. Pfft, vip. Fit. Dip. Um, yeah, and I'm not even. Oh, uh, I bet I'm getting a contact high from just being in this room. 
That's absolutely happening, isn't it? I bet that's happening. That's cool, it's a freebie. Um, so I'll just say a little bit about myself. Uh, I am uh, uh, aging uh, reluctantly, um, and I'm trying out, uh, I'm single, and so I'm trying out a bunch of different aesthetics. The current aesthetic I'm working with is skater Colonel Sanders. It's sort of a, sort of a, I, I think there's a, there's a world out there that needs more crust punk plantation owners. So that's the vibe I'm trying to give off. I think it's working really well with the ladies, but what the fuck would I know? Uh, it is, uh, with, with the exception of the lovely Brooklyn here, it is a complete fucking sausage fest in this room. And our, what's our bartender's name? Maddie. Maddie? Maddie? <laughs> tip Maddie. Even if you didn't get anything, if you got a piece of cheese or a cheese ball, tip Maddie. I know she ain't getting paid, none of us are. Um, but women, yeah, they're a mystery. Like this joke, just, I don't know, we'll see if guys think this joke is funny. Here's what I know about women. They like murder podcasts and dress with po dresses with pockets. That's like the two things I know that women like. Yeah, that's funnier with women, apparently. Um, all right, uh, let's give it up for the Amish. Yeah, they were hit really hard by COVID. I just found this out recently. I had a friend that was telling me that uh, they were, because they weren't vaccinated, but they didn't mingle with not with like the rest of us, that they didn't get COVID really bad, but I actually researched it and he was completely fucking wrong. The Amish got hurt very hard, hit very hard by COVID. Um, but you know, I think that we owe, we owe a great debt to the Amish. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't have Mumford and Sons without them, I'm pretty sure. Um, and uh, I went to a, uh, does the vibe get weird when I start talking about the Amish? I kind of feel like they're just going to start coming out of the woodwork. Um, but uh, I went to an Amish strip club the other day, and that was uh, very interesting. You have to be very patient because it takes them forever to get all those buttons undone. And uh, what, I, what I really thought was weird was the way they would use a butter churn as a stripper pole. I'm sure there were some splinters happening. It is kind of sexy. Butter, butter in general, being butter, butter being involved in lovemaking is uh, uh, thumbs up for me. Is this anyone's iguana? Is your iguana? Yeah, put him on my shoulder. I've been experimenting with being that guy that goes to. Is there a guy at the festival that has a snake or or an iguana, like a real one? Those are the same people that usually have those little poles that they like. They can. Yeah, you know that vibe, the hacky sack festival kind of guy. Um, yeah, this one. Is that a chameleon or it's a chameleon, isn't it? Not an iguana? It's an iguana. It's an, it's an iguana. It's, well, the good news is it, it's, it's in great shape. I get really uncomfortable when I'm around those ones that are uh, suffering from reptile dysfunction. Um, okay, puns are. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish with this last pun. Uh, I don't I don't even know what the joke is, but the punchline is Boba fetish. So it's like something to do with a Star Wars kink that might involve Thai tea or Thai, like a Japanese beverage of some kind. All right, um, that's, a, that's a great. It's a good vibe in right now. Um, all right, I'm going to bring up Conrad Lensmeyer, and I want to thank you guys for kicking it in the VIP room with us. And I will. Do you need your mic stand? You probably do. Yeah. Woo! Yeah. 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 You guys enjoy the festival. I've been Jeff Thompson. Jeff Thompson, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise. It seems like we've had a rotating door of an audience, but this has been a show. Uh, here's a song I wrote about Miami, Oklahoma. Uh, I'm going to do comedy on the Bricks Pavilion stage uh, at 11.30 with Evan Hughes, and then I'm going to play some music. Here's a little taste. This is called The Middle of Nowhere. <laughs>
doing comedy and smoking.